URL session is built on top of the network framework and networking can take some time. And that's time the user can be doing other things. This is where concurrency comes into play. Now, if you already have experience with concurrency, then by all means, feel free to skip this video. But if you are new to it, definitely follow along. In a nutshell, concurrency means doing multiple things at once. When we write our code, that code can be translated into a single path of execution. We may have lots of objects communicating with each other, but if you just follow the path of execution, you'll see that it follows a linear path. This is evident when you set a breakpoint in the debugger and then you step through each line of code. You can think of this path of execution as a thread. In fact, we write all of our code in what is known as the main thread. This is the thread that runs our code, but also the code that manages, that manages the user interface as well. As you add threads to your code, you actually have more paths of execution. This means you can do multiple things of one, at once. One thread can be responding to user input and another thread could download files across the network. A thread runs on a CPU core. The more cores that a device has, the more threads can run at the same time. If there are more threads than resources to run them, then the CPU will switch between them. One moment a thread is trucking along, drawing a circle on the screen, and the next moment it's asleep. Moments later, it's awake, unaware it was ever asleep. Computer, computers process information so fast that we can't see the processing. If we could process things as fast as a computer, the experience of using it would appear choppy and stuttering as all the, as all the various threads started and stopped. But as is, the experience is seamless to us. As mentioned, all of our code run in the same thread as the user interface. This means if we take too much time, our user interface may appear sluggish and unresponsive. Let's see this in action. To get started, create a new project in Xcode. Select the single view app project template. Give it the name concurrency test and make sure to add an organization identifier if you don't have one. Also make sure that the language is set to Swift. Then click Next, choose a location, and then Create. The first thing we need to do is create a simple user interface. The only purpose of this interface is to show interaction. Click on the main.storyboard to open Interface Builder. In the Object Library, search for a date picker and drag it onto the scene. Click the Pin button and pin it to the top. Then click the Align button and horizontally align it in the container. Next, search for a button in the object library and drag it underneath the date picker. Pin it to the bottom of the date picker, then align it horizontally in the container as well. Double click the button and have it read calculate prime numbers. That's right, we're going to be calculating a lot of them. Open up the assistant editor and right click and drag to the view controller. From the dialog, select Action and give it the name Calculate Prime Numbers, then click Connect. Do the same for the button, only this time select Outlet instead of Action. Give it the name Prime Number Button. Once we have our new interface set up, let's write some code. First, switch back to the standard editor. Click on ViewController.Swift and at the bottom of the view controller, add the following method. This is just a method used to determine whether a number is prime or not. We're not looking for efficiency, we're looking to do a lot of work. Finally, in Calculate Primes, add the following. This method loops through 100 million numbers to determine if they are prime. 
Needless to say, this is going to take a bit of time. To see this in action, build and run. Now tap the Calculate Primes button. In the console, you'll see the results of the operation, but if you try to change the date in the date picker, you'll see that you can't. The button is locked up as well. Your interface is essentially locked until the operation is complete. Since the user doesn't have a console, they will think that the application has crashed, being that the interface is unresponsive. You may be thinking about adding a progress bar, but that wouldn't update as well. You've effectively locked up the user interface until the operation is finalized. Now there is one way to fix it, which we'll cover in the next video.